Does anyone have an agenda for tonight? Anyone? I see you talking, Liz, but I don't hear you talking. I said come back because I just did something and got rid of myself. Hold on. Oh, no. <laughs> good. We're all having technical difficulties tonight. That's good. That's good. I'm afraid to let me, you know what, I can log on my um log on my computer because I'm on my phone. My computer doesn't have Zoom on it, but my phone does. But I can log on the computer and pull up the agenda. Did Jennifer disappear? No, oh, she's still there. Oh, agenda, agenda, agenda. I just want to flag for folks that uh, Philip Avila, uh, the attendee, has his hand up. I don't, I don't know how to do anything with that, but I just wanted to flag it. So Philip is our co-chair. Um, I don't know if I got an agenda. Okay, I've just been talking for like 15 minutes and I was on mute. So yes, I kept saying is Jennifer disappeared. Um, <laughs> we left Philip in as like an actual attendee and or like as a participant. I know because Philip's not on, I can't see him. Right. I just see him as an attendee and I can't like I think I just jumped on. Oh, there you go. Hey. All right. Hey, how's it going? Good, 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 good. Sorry well, about the that. theme is every, everybody's in a car. So Deborah and Edgar, I'm sorry, we're not usually this discombobulated. I, again, had to go to Cooley Dickinson this afternoon, and we're just on our way out. So I'm a little bit frazzled. So I would like to introduce, oh, and um, Gopi is here. Very nice. So um, the folks from the Julius Ford Harriet Tubman Healthy Living Community are here and we are working with them for the community festival next almost in like about two weeks so um Deborah and or Gopi or Edgar do you want to take it over and speak for a few minutes I'm in a meeting in the call. Sure. why don't you call me when you get home okay all right, all right. can you all hear us can you all hear me Yes. yes, Jennifer, I think you might awesome. want to mute. All right. Well, hello, everyone. Thank you so much for uh, having us um, join your meeting. So uh, as Jennifer stated, uh, my name is Deborah Ferreira. I have no relation to Sid Ferreira. I don't know that guy. I don't know who he is. You all Stop do know that tale, that's my brother, Stop right? Tale. Yeah. Stop telling your tale. <laughs> but, Stop anyway. Um, is he on? I don't see him. I don't see him either. Uh, okay. But anyway, so uh, long story short, Julius Ford Heritage and Healthy Living uh, Community is really uh, a group uh, put together by a lot of different community members, intergenerational, um, uh, youth leadership focused, making sure that youth in our group are the leaders uh, for our group. We were established about um, 2007 
Um, and we first started by having conferences, really dealing with social justice, critical thinking, um, you know, any type of wellness, uh, healthy living kind of perspectives, uh, how to take care of the land, environmental justice, sustainability, um, how to really grow your own, right? Grow your own food and really focus on your health, especially as people of color. So definitely BIPOC centered too. And we started by partnering up with uh, Earth Dance, which is this um, organization out in Plainfield, Massachusetts, that really focused on contact dancing and again, really working on the land. Um, and it was started by uh, my late husband, Julius Ford, uh, who now, you know, th there's part of the name is, is, is the, of the group, as well as Gopi, who's on. So Gopi will definitely talk to you all a little bit more about this. And then some other um, members, it was a then um, director of Earth Dance, Margaret uh, Galanter, who also was part of the original um, co-founders. Um, and since then, you know, we've just been doing uh, those conferences, bringing groups from Springfield area, Holyoke, obviously Amherst. Um, we also brought groups from uh, New Bedford, like Third Eye and, and Youth Build members, always focusing on young people and making sure that young people really understanding how to really you know, critically think, um, have emotional intelligence and get a lot of what sometimes they don't get with, through, through schools on a day-to-day -day basis, especially at public schools, right? Um, in, the, uh, in the surrounding areas. Um, so my kids, I have, you know, my son Phoenix and, and my son Onyx have grown up through healthy living and they're now youth leaders and our kids, so Edgar's um, kids and Gopi's uh, daughter have all grown up within healthy living. So fast forward now, um, besides the conference this year, uh, two of our young people, my son Phoenix and Edgar's daughter, Jasmine, had the idea of putting together a festival, right? Because for them, they were like, listen, it's been these last couple of years have been very difficult because of the pandemic, because of the uprising around what's been going on with George, you know, in terms of George Floyd's killing and everything that has been happening, uh, focused on uh, BIPOC uh, youth, youth of color. And, um, and, and also in terms of just, you know, the nat adequacies and everything that has been happening in terms of the schools being closed. And so our young people have been feeling it. And I know you all have, I have known that there's a lot of mental health issues going on with our young people. And, and it's just been a very difficult time for everyone and everyone's families and friends and communities. And so Jasmine and Phoenix basically had the idea of let's, let's bring the community together. Let's, let's have an opportunity to have like a speak out, have some poetry, have performances, um, you know, bring the community together and also have fun. So there's going to be like a basketball tournament. There's going to be, you know, other sports activities, arts and crafts, face painting, you know, different things to really, and of course, food and have people come together and really be together through this time and have an opportunity for, for our community to really speak out in terms of what's been going on, right? Uh, locally, nationally, and globally. Right, because we need to really know that we are interconnected. Obviously, if COVID didn't show that we're interconnected, I don't know what we'll ever show people. Right, that we're interconnected. So, um, so we started out having this concept, and then as we continued to plan for it, then we connected with the old and young. Right, that we we connected with P from the old and young, and then through my work with the community safety working group um, that I work with with a bunch of other members. I think I then said to to our group, I said, hey, we should connect with with Jennifer. Right. And see if maybe we can partner with the town. And then Jennifer said that there was you all's group, the Human Rights Commission, that you all might be interested in, in partnering up with us, too. And that's how it was birthed. Um, and so now we're going to have like the Heroes Award uh, during that time. We want to make sure that you all have time to talk about the Human Rights Commission and the wonderful work that you all do. And we really want this to be a partnership, an opportunity for all of us to work together in a, in a situation where, like I said, it's youth focused, intergenerational, BIPOC focused, right? Like the food that we want to have there should be food that's going to be, you know, sold from restaurants that are BIPOC restaurants, right? Um, so really, I mean, I'm going to stop now, but that's kind of like in a nutshell, a little bit about it. Uh, but I'll, I'll uh, let Gopi and Edgar chime in at this point. Thank you, Deborah. 
Edgar, you want to say something? Uh, uh, yeah, uh, I can go after you though, Gopi. All right, all right. Um, thank you, Deborah, for such a great synopsis of where we've been at uh, with the Julius Ford Harry Tubman Healthy Living Community for uh, 13 years. We've been, you know, running. I think probably our 14th year about now. Um, and I, all I want to add is uh, thank you, Human Rights Commission, for for jumping in with us uh, to uh, help put this festival together. And Jennifer, thank you so much for uh, being. Um, willing to uh, assist with so many resources and helping uh, uh, get the town behind this process. Um, and I'm just really looking forward to, uh, to the day. That's good. And I look forward to meeting you all. So look forward to meeting you Earl and, and um, Liz Haywood, is that right? Um, all right. It's hey good, but we met up on the mountain when we went for hey good. Go. Oh yeah, 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 Liz. I remember, the, uh, hike, uh, I remember the hike. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. I look forward to seeing you again. Riding across some rocks. <laughs> yeah, right. Okay, good. I'll see you that, soon. That was a great hike, Liz. Okay, it was memorable. It was. It was. <laughs> Edgar, did you want to say something? Did you want to say something? Uh, yeah, uh, well, I just want to echo what uh, you guys uh, said. Um, uh, I'm, I'm definitely uh, pretty excited about collaborating with the Human Rights Commission. Uh, I uh, just uh, have a lot of people witness, a lot of people from Amherst and through my connections with the Amherst community, uh, some of the great work that you all are doing there. Um, and it's, I mean, it's really exciting. Uh, let me put it this way. I get to meet you guys first before I meet the Northampton Human Rights Commissioner. I'm involved in all kinds of uh, committees in the city. Um, so um, we have a little bit of work to do in Northampton. And um, I actually might just steal some of you guys' ideas about uh, how to handle different things in, in, uh, in your own town. Um, so I want to say that it's definitely a pleasure uh, to have an opportunity to work with you guys. Um, and then the only other thing that um, that I want to add is that uh, this really makes me feel a lot like the gold tournament uh, that we um, organized back in like 2001 at the high school in Amherst. Um, Liz was, um, uh, I'm sure, part of that. Um, and um, uh, this this uh, event just gives me, uh, it was an excellent event, by the way. It was uh, really well attended and it was a complete uh, community uh, come together. Uh, so many parts uh, came together because people uh, really just wanted to do their part in, in, in putting something beautiful together for the community. Um, and this is the type of feel that uh, I'm getting um, and the energy that I'm getting from this uh, from this event. So I'm really excited about it. Uh, my son Jake has been really excited about the basketball part, which is, you know, we're using um, uh, basketball as uh, as the hook, just like we did back in the gold tournament 2001 uh, to kind of bring folks together. Um, uh, and of course, we got uh, many other activities planned. Uh, but I know my son and I are excited about seeing the ballers back out there and on a new court. New, a nice, nice, uh, nicely done, re, redone park and all that. So um, uh, thank you guys for uh, uh, letting us come to the meeting today and I'm looking forward to it. Thank you guys so much. Commissioners, do you want to introduce yourselves? Yeah, I'll, ju I'll jump in. So I'm Ben Harrington. I'm co-chair of the Human Rights Commission. I do other things in town too. I, I, so this this whole time, I've, I've I've kind of been like wowed and amazed, right? So so I went to I don't know if it was the first conference at Earth Dance or just one of the first, but so so I I've, I've had the, the honor and privilege of kind of like being involved with both sets of folks here, or all three sets of folks here, because the other thing that I do 
whether or not anyone else knows is I'm kind of like a basketball coach, sort of running like a program. Got some things going on with that. But yeah, so like to me, this is like, this is as great as it gets. You know what I mean? So whatever we can do, yeah, I'm, I'm more than willing to help facilitate. So and we'll move on to the next. I was trying to segue you, Philip. There you go. Yep, I'm, I'm trying to find the mute button. I had to go onto my phone and it's throwing me off just a little bit. But yep, I'm Philip um, Avila. I'm the other co-chair of the Human Rights Commission. And I'll just echo what Ben has said, that we are more than eager to help out in any way that we can. Hi, everybody. I'm Liz Haygood. I'm a commissioner. Um, been part of the Amherst community since... 1970, yeah. <laughs> um, I've had the privilege of meeting and dealing with, in a very positive way, all of your children. And um, unfortunately, I will not be in attendance on May 7th. As some of you all know, I am really heavy into track officiating, and I will be at Yale officiating the Ivy League championships that day. However, as Jennifer knows, whatever she needs me to do beforehand, shopping for food, getting gifts, whatever it is, that's, I'm the girl. Is that all of the members here? I think so. Um, so yeah, uh, Deborah, can you I guys have a point. Jennifer, can I yeah. say something? Yeah. Uh, there's Earl Miller. I, I, yeah, I was getting there. So oh, okay. Earl Miller okay. is the new, and I'm glad that Deborah and Gopi and, and Edgar are here. So Earl Miller is the new CREST director. So we have a program called Community Responders for Equity, Safety, and Service. This is a new department that was really driven by the community. And um, I'll let Earl introduce himself to everyone here. Yay! Hello, I am, I am uh, tomorrow will be uh, my the end of my fifth week doing this. I'm um, still pretty psyched, so that's a good sign. Um, Cress is, I think you all are familiar with the idea, right? The town owns this idea, you own this idea. Um, you know, we are trying to take the, the, I took this job because I watched your, I watched the process the town went through and it spoke to me, right? You guys did the hard work. Those meetings, those CSWG meetings, were brutal. And I'll be honest with you, one of the questions I've asked those group members is, why didn't you quit? Um, a lot of towns started down this road and quit. They quit at similar spaces to the ones this group found themselves in. Um, challenging ideas of what first responders can look like. Um, looking at how compassion is shown in our community, right? These are big, big ideas. And uh, I spent the last four years in a very safe place. Uh, I worked for the state. Um, you know, uh, it was, it felt safe. And, and seeing this job, I felt like, you know, I think there's a such thing as being too safe. This is a big risk, big reward position for me. Uh, I'm, I'm, I like to play, uh, to play the game for real. That's what we're doing. Um, so in the five weeks I've been on, we're looking at uh, kind of other departments in the town and how we can support their mission um, and ideally allow them to do what they do best without the pieces that they struggle with. An example of that is Jones Library. Um, for folks who aren't aware, one of the challenging points of their day is the end of the day um, when they have to put people out of a warm or cool space, depending on the time of year, uh, out into the elements. They don't feel good about that, right? They're telling people they need to leave and they have no ability to follow up on that. Uh, so Crest will do that. Um, we will take over that function uh, starting mid-June um, and we will do that every day uh, as long as we're here. Um, it'll allow the librarians to be librarians for their whole shift um, and not have to end the day kind of in this struggle. It'll also allow us to meet people and we'll have vehicles so we can get them someplace that's warm or cool depending on the time of year. Um, Shaking a lot of hands. Uh, we're gonna take over one of the cafeterias at the middle school next year. Uh, that's the scariest place in town. So I figured that's where we should be. Uh, those middle schoolers are tough. Uh, I went there and worked a lunch shift and got to see, you know, shake hands. And kind of the way I'm approaching this is everybody in the town is a resident uh, deserving of respect and consideration. So spending lots of time at the senior center, spending lots of time at the schools, 
shaking everybody's hand, right? Just because they're a kid doesn't mean they don't deserve to get to know me in a, a, a real way, right? A palpable way. Um, and as we're looking at hiring, uh, I am uninterested in bringing people who don't share my passion for this work into the team, right? This is not... Um, this is not about kind of promoting ourselves, although I'll say uh, I'm sorry for all the times you're seeing my face in your local papers. I didn't tell them to do that, but it seems uh, to be good kind of raising the stock. Uh, I want people who are interested in the work. Um, if we get the work right, everything else is on the other side of that, right? If people want the, the more extrinsic uh, value from work, well, if we figure this out, uh, then, then all that's there. Uh, we will be the first department in New England to stand up. Uh, we will stand up mid-June. Um, we will have eight responders, a program assistant and myself. We will be taking 911 calls. Um, and I know there was a lot of focus on those 911 calls. I'm hoping more of our work happens upstream, right? I'm hoping more of our work is about meeting people before there needs to be a 911 call. Um, and I, I think the escalation works. I believe in it, right? I ran a center in Springfield in the South End for six years never called the police once. Uh, we just didn't need to. I think the people want to be respectful. Um, I demand it, right? I, 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 people will be respectful because I will be respectful to them. Not because I'm going to scare them into being respectful, but because respect is a mutual thing and I'll give it to everybody and, and I'll, I'll ask for it back. Um, we, we today, Jennifer was with me, we were hiring for a program assistant. Um, we have some incredible candidates. Um, I think I'm probably going to be the least impressive on the team, which is a good place to be. Um, and, and you know, I, I think that people's human rights matter. Uh, that's something I believe pretty deeply in when I worked for the state. Uh, I was a part of several processes that looked at the way people who receive services from the state are treated. Uh, and I'm committed to, to supporting your mission. Uh, and also, maybe more importantly, to receiving feedback from you whenever and wherever you feel it's appropriate. Um, I've told everybody this and I'll share it with you. If you have to give me information and you're struggling whether to just say it or say it politely, please just say it, right? Please just say it. Uh, the work is too important for us to waste time on niceties. Uh, if you think there's something we should be doing better, tell us now. We may disagree, but we'll have a respectful conversation. And I'm, I don't expect to win every one of those conversations. Uh, I, don't, I don't have a monopoly on being right. Uh, I don't have a monopoly, certainly on the town, right? You all know the town better than I do. Um, invite me to something. Uh, I'll come have coffee at your house. We'll go, we'll go have lunch with folks. We're going to do events at the apartments. Uh, there's 35,000 people. I think I've shook in a thousand hands. So I have 34,000 more people to meet. Uh, I'm pretty excited for that. Um, and I, this is my dream job. I'm pretty pumped. So, uh, you know, I'm going to do this work with optimism. Uh, I am going to do this work with a hopeful spirit. And we're going to have fun. Ultimately, maybe the most important thing is uh, I believe that this work can be done joyfully. I believe that this work can be done with, with like a, a, a light heart, right? I think that people don't get better because someone scares them into it, right? Uh, I've been thinking a lot about harm reduction, right? How do we support the folks in our town who are using substances in a way that negatively impacts them? And one of the things that uh, there's a really great um, article out now about the uh, supervised consumption site in New York. You know, one of the things that we know is that, you know, our current system just punishes drug users until they have nothing left. Uh, and the reality is that people who have nothing left will use drugs until they die. That is the reality of that situation. So, you know, we, we want to be helpful without taking things from folks. We won't make anybody dance for their food, you know, being respectful of everybody and, and I'm psyched. I could talk about this for hours. In fact, that's what I do most of the time now. I imagine soon here I'll have to get to work and I'll miss the times where I got to talk with you about this. But um, I have an open door if you have a thought. And Deborah, you have your hand up. So maybe we can open that door now. Yeah, sorry, Earl. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. And obviously we're looking forward to seeing you on May 7th um, at uh, Mill River. Yeah. It's from to five when the the uh, festival is taking place but hopefully for folks from the human rights commission hopefully you all can be there we're going to be there at eight o'clock in the morning 
um, and we're going to be, you know, setting up and doing everything. We'll have, we'll have at 10 a.m., we're going to have like a little kind of just bringing together of everyone that's there to do like a ceremonial circle just to kind of make sure that we are focused, ready, you know, united, you know, focused on peace and love and all that good stuff. Um, and then from 10 to 10.30, and then we'll continue setting up and then kick it off at 12. We'll have a DJ. We're going to have music. We're going to have all, all that good stuff. So hopefully... Folks from the Human Rights Commission, um, Jennifer, myself, Gopi, Edgar, and some other folks, Pete from Old and Young, and um, our DJ, Carlos Rec McBride, we're all meeting like tomorrow, um, 1030 to 1130. We're trying to meet every week um, to kind of, you know, continue discussing, you know, the itinerary, the agenda, where we need to kind of plug in, things that need to be done. So feel free to join us on any of those planning meetings. Um, right now, though, I do need to jump off because we have our Julius Ford Harry Summer Healthy Living Community uh, weekly meeting because we're also meeting on a weekly basis in order to kind of get things ready for May 7th since we're only about two weeks ago away, right? Things are coming fast and in a hurry. Uh, but it was lovely and wonderful to meet you all and can't wait to meet in person and for us to have a beautiful, wonderful day on May 7th. Thanks, All right. Edgar. Thanks, Gopi. Thanks, Edgar. Thank Love you guys. guys so much. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Peace. Thank you guys. Peace. Bye. 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 So I'm going to meet with them tomorrow um, at 1030. So I guess the goal and hope is who, for folks, if they can, to come as early as they can. Obviously, Deborah said that, you know, we would start setting up at 8. But if you can come before the event starts at noon, so if you can come before noon, that would be great. Um, just because we need setups, we got tents to set up and um, tables to put up, and we got to do the basketball court. So there's lots to be done. Um, and so I actually pulled up the agenda. So just give me one second, and um, if I can find it back because I'm on my phone. So we did the. Um, just to talk about the HRC awards a little bit. So um, we got about 12 participants, 12 people who were nominated, which is really good. And I basically got them all the first three days that I put out the announcement, which usually I have to send out, cons like consistently I have to send out um, reminders to folks. So it was really nice. We got them back very quickly. We do have one larger group that we will um, honor as well for their hard work. Um, and so what I'm looking for from this group is for someone, I would like to forward the nomination papers and have someone do a write-up. Liz, do you think you could do that? Notice how I just threw that in there. I can, especially yes. if there are people that I know. <laughs> and yes. then other people I will, if you show up, I did that last year. I know. Oh, okay, no problems. <laughs> and then Philip, this is like you're going to be your one year anniversary, right? Because we met you at the Human Rights Commission Hero Awards last year. Right. I think I was a potential candidate at that point, and then soon after, a full candidate. So yeah, it will be. <laughs> you you were yeah. you were a finalist as far as you knew, but you were the finalist as far as we knew. <laughs> I'm so I honest. think <laughs> I think one of the things that we need to figure out is what do we want to gift the the youth um, for their heroism. In the past, we were um, purchasing globes, like a world globe, and they would get a certificate. So I'll definitely do the certificates again. But I didn't know if anybody had. I'm honestly thinking what people's thoughts are for an actual um, gift for the youth. Was there like a thing behind the fact that they were getting a globe every year? Like, was there like... I it, I think it was like something? a peace on earth kind of thing. I, you okay. know, like you bring... It's changing the world, right? Because I think that's what yeah. the certificate says, is you're changing the world. So um, I think it kind of ran in that perspective as it was a change. You're changing the world. Is there a reason why we wouldn't give them a globe this year? Why not give them a globe? Oh, we question. can. I just was asking what people's thoughts were if they had something else. No, based no. on what you just said right now, I don't feel like we can give them anything other than a globe. It's it's just a matter of like style and flair, yeah. et cetera, et cetera, at this point. 
So I know one year for the employee recognition party, we did globes and I was able to get like clear label pictures and I was able to like put a picture of the department around it. So I'll see if I can find, you know, around a stand that the globe sat on. So I'll see if I can find something like that. And maybe we can put like a, a you know, the picture of their school or the town of Amherst yep. or something on that. So that was pretty fun. Yep. Little arts and crafts project for myself. Um, and let me go back to the agenda quickly. So I wanted to give you guys, does anybody have any other questions about the HRC awards? No. Nope. Nope. So I wanted to um, give you guys an update on the human rights complaints because we've had several over um, probably the last six months. And when I say several, I mean, we've had about four or five, but they've yep. been pretty... Um, that's a lot for us because we usually don't get any. So one of the things I'd like to say about that is the word is definitely getting out. So that is a little bit reassuring that people know to come to the town because I think at some point they didn't really know. Um, the other thing is I want folks to know that when we, so Donna Ray, who was the human rights director, um, human resources director has been acting as the human rights director. And I, in that manner have been the assistant. And so we go about these approaches um, these investigations together. And so with, um, you know, our, our whole entire mission is to make sure that what we are investigating, that is that whoever we're investigating, that whatever their process is, is done fairly and it's done for everyone. So we need to be able to see, you know, show us a policy, show us um, how it happened to somebody else. You know, we just want to be able to see and fully understand what's going on. And so none of these have actually really turned out to be human rights complaints in the sense of we can't really pinpoint that uh, you were treated any different than anybody. But what I will say is that um, we do not just leave the person there. We put them in the right direction. We make sure we, uh, you know, get them to the right person to continue to give them help. So, you know, we're not just saying like, oh, it's an, it wasn't a human rights com complaint, you know, for us because it wasn't just discrimination and, you know, that's it. We actually take the time out to, to move them forward. So um, the first one that came to us was a woman who had an issue with the shelter. And, you know, um, it was really, a, she had a policy issue, right? And so what we did was we, you know, reached out to the shelter. We asked to see their policy on this. And they were able to provide that. And then we, you know, there was some other things going on. There was a few mental health um, issues. You know, this is a great time for Crest to be around because that's something that they probably could have picked up too. Um, and so what we ended up doing was helping her through the, the, um, the shelter's complaint process, right? We helped her with that. And then she got that. And then she just kind of, um, we ended up closing it out because there was nothing to be found, but we made sure that we could get her to the right forms and to the right people to speak. And she actually ended up being relocated. Uh, the next one was a gentleman who had a complaint about the shelter and about community connections. They really just felt like they had been blacklisted, which is understandable from landlords and from the different uh human service agencies in Amherst. Um, and so that one was a little bit harder to call, but we did, we were able to reach out to community connections and, and smooth things out and get that person the help that they needed for housing. Because at the end of the day, that's what that was about. Um, the next one was, we had a gentleman who's, they were in the Amherst family and the mother went to Cooley Dickinson and then was you know, she had to stay at Cooley Dick for a while and the son had been um, trespassed against Cooley Dick. So he felt like he was being discriminated against. And so that was a very legal scenario going on right there. And so one of the things that the Human Rights Commission does not do is approach legal stuff. We will help you find legal representation, but we will not invest, you know, we won't get involved. Also, we are talking about in Northampton, which is outside of our area. So we only work within Amherst. Um, but if somebody came who lived in Amherst that had a complaint from 
another town, we would still help and assist. Um, so we actually connected that individual with the ombudsman's person for the hospital. And then we also gave them uh, some numbers for legal counsel. So the next one was a little more, was a little trickier. We had a gentleman who was parked on um, Mill Lane, where, you know, not by Gruff Park, but on the other end, and a little tucked in nook. And, uh, you know, um, the police, the, and I, so what I didn't know was that that was Amherst College property. So the police kind of rolled up and asked for their license. This individual refused the license but the individual really felt like he was approached and you know the license was demanded because he was a person of color. So one of the issues was, you know, they had a sign that said, you know, all are welcome here, you know, just make sure you clean up after your dog basically. So, you know, if you have a sign like that, it doesn't really matter where somebody's parked, it makes it seem like it's pretty inviting and that there shouldn't be an issue if somebody is in that space, but there was. And so we um, reached out to the, the chief of police for Amherst College and um, we kind of talked through and we asked for, you know, what happened. And so they were a little, uh, you know, when you get a call from the town, people's first reaction is I'm going to call our, our legal team, our lawyers to see what I can and can't say. I mean, that's typically what we get. So people do get, um, you know, they immediately are like, oh, a human rights complaint. So this ended up turning into a legal ma ma matter because the person did not have a, a valid driver's license. And so they received a ticket perhaps to go to, to go to court over driving without a license. And so at that point, you know, we really couldn't do much for that, but we could offer this person legal. He didn't want to take, you know, he figured he would work on it on himself. But any, I'm sorry, but anytime this individual called, we definitely um, was supported in any way that we could. Like they had asked for a copy of the record of the report. And so we reached out to the police chief of Amherst College and asked that. And so um, that was the last one. The, the next one was in an apartment complex where an individual's car had been towed, um, you know, during snow removal and the individual really felt like that they were targeted because they were a person of color so uh this one i reached out to the apartment complex itself and uh asked for their you know their policy because again once again once you start saying things like your human rights complaint they want to say well i'm going to check in with legal so they did forward me their snow removal policy, where the cars should be, where they should be parked, and, the, and that entire process. And so the other piece of it was that there was a witness that said another car had been put onto the tow truck and moved. Um, but the individual that we're talking about did not have a sticker to the complex. And so it just, you know, they felt uh, the complex, they actually took a picture of it before they towed it. They took a picture of where it was towed. I mean, of where you'd parked before it was towed. So the car was towed because it was parked in a place where it shouldn't have been parked during snow removal. And somebody else had seen another car that was parked and they just moved it. The car that was just moved had a sticker. So they actually charged that person for that move that they did right there in the complex. This car for the individual who made the complaint did not have a sticker. And so there wasn't a way to trace back to them in the manner that they felt. And so they towed the car. And so those are the, then there's one that is current now with the woman who is having an, um, a complaint about the Amherst Housing Authority. She's feeling targeted by the, uh, by the director of the Amherst Housing Authority. And so those are all of the complaints at this time. Does anybody have any questions? I will send this in a written document. I'm just not in the office at the moment, sorry. Yes, I don't Liz. have any questions, but I just think that um, in all the situations was handled fairly, justly, and you know, even when there's not a human rights quote unquote issue to be able to give people um, the next step in the process or to help them move forward is um, a good way to do things 
Um, it, I know it takes up a lot of time. So I thank you for your due diligence in all of the situations. And um, yeah, and, and the one that's still pending, but you know, if it, there's any way we can be in of, of assistance, let us know, please. Absolutely, absolutely. And thank you. And I will relay those kind words to Donna Ray. I will say one of the things that we that did come up with one of the um, investigations was really like, how far can we go with stuff, right? Like, so when the DEI director comes, they will take on that role as the permanent, you know, human rights director. And so one of the things I would like for us to do is kind of smooth out our, our regular process when someone files that complaint. And also, um, it, which is hard because everyone's complaint is so different, but also, you know, if there is a, com if, if, it, if the complaint is, you know, valid in the sense that it was definitely discrimination without a doubt, like then how do we really proceed, you know, after that? And so I'm hoping that we can really smooth those kinds of things out moving forward with the director. So it's on the list of things to do. Um, anybody else have questions about that? I'm getting the Zoom thing on the phone pretty well now. So I'm feeling, I'm feeling a little bit empowered. I just have to take the time out to say that, right? Um, yeah. I was able to make Ben and Philip the co-host, so I'm feeling a little gully. Let me just find out what's next on the, what else is on the agenda. So I, we're going to have to table the upcoming events. What I will say is in July and August, there are no Heritage Months listed, um, but for June, I know, I believe it's Caribbean, Caribbean American Heritage Month, and then we have Juneteenth. So I'm not fully 100% ready to, to, to shine back on Juneteenth, but Juneteenth this week, this year falls on a weekend. We are doing a full weekend celebration. Um, there's stuff going on in multiple places. It's going to be fabulous, hopefully bigger than last year. Um, so we're super excited um, to be able to offer these things. And probably at the next meeting, I'll be able to kind of Say, let you guys know where I might need some support and some stuff to, to have done. Um, but yeah, I'm super excited that it's a week, it's on a Sunday. So it's like a whole weekend event. And I'm just really excited about that. And so any yeah. questions from anyone? I had a question, Jen, just um, that's very, really great and really awesome. And definitely looking forward to that weekend in June. Um, just about though the process of the complaint process is there any reason or any like what is the reason why a commission member cannot be a part of going through it kind of with you and I forget the other um Donna person's Ray. Name. Yep. yeah so in the past I mean that has happened where we've called out onto the chair it just becomes a little bit sticky, you know, because we don't like these, some of these things happened a while ago and there's an, and at one point the meetings were in per, it just got a little bit, um, I don't want to say confusing, but you know, one of the things that we had to do for the human rights complaint process was, you know, someone would have to literally come into a meeting to give that, right? And so that's not helpful. It's you're, you know, you're out there in the public in a meeting, although we didn't typically have folks come to our meetings, but it would have been recorded in the minutes. And so one of the ways that we went to avoid that was by having people fill out an online complaint form. And I think that through that process, we kind of realized that it was a little bit easier. And then also one of the things that we're doing is we are, um, weeding through. So if there was an actual complaint complaint, then we probably would have asked for one of the co-chairs or both the co-chairs to attend. Um, but I do hear what you're saying. And so I, you know, that's something that I can discuss with the director because it makes sense. And at what point you guys want to be involved would probably be up to you and the director. I just want to add, because this is something that Cress is already involved in. Um, I think what happens with human rights process sometimes is that folks with mental health challenges who feel unheard uh, are ending up in this thing. And one of the really great things Jennifer and Donna Ray have set up is that we're starting to intercept some of those folks now. 
Um, so starting to set up regular times to meet with them. Some of them, it's it really is the Human Rights Commission is a guaranteed response, right? And sometimes, so I'll say some of these things are more complex mental health needs than actual complaints. And, and hopefully that's a role Crest can serve is kind of intercepting those folks before they kind of fall down a path that's not gonna lead to much ultimately because unfortunately some of these complaints I think are more rooted in someone's trauma history than kind of an actual actionable step by you all. So just as far as an intercept point, we've already started working on that. And, and maybe that's a space where we can collaborate. It's kind of clearly defining when you all would like us to step in uh, and how you'd like us to step in. Yeah, yeah. So like, I, I kind of feel like that's key because like all with the exception of one issue, since I've been on the commission, I can say that like the majority of it been exactly that, that, that somebody's like crying out for something other than what we can provide them with. It's just the fact that we can actually answer them in, in some sort of meaningful way. But yeah, yeah, that, that's very helpful to have that. And I- We, we have we had to... Crest, like something like Crest as a resource, right? So. Yeah, and I just wanna add too, like it doesn't necessarily feel good when you know that somebody needs more help than what we can give and then we send them to legal thinking that because then it's just on legal. So to have Crest to be able to kind of intervene and get at the root of the issues there is a lot more healthy, you know, we would still give them that legal info, but to have, be able to send, you know, refer them to Crest is only going to make it more solid, I think, at the end. We can um, go with them, right? Really yeah. what they want is someone who's going to, you know, to some degree hold their hand through the process, which I don't say that in a uh, pacifying way. If I had to deal with the legal system, I would want someone to hold my hand through it. And we can do that. We're, we're preparing to do that. We're scaling up to do that. So, um, you know, a great example is, is one of these folks just need someone to talk to. And so we're setting up a regular time to talk to this person, but also setting some healthy boundaries to really kind of model, you know, hey, you don't actually need to, to start this whole process anytime you want something. You could just call and ask for it. Um, and I, I hopefully that'll mean that you guys are getting more streamlined stuff. But the reality is, I don't know that there is a human rights complaint that doesn't have some aspect of trauma, right? Whether it's legitimate or it's someone's perception that doesn't line up with the kind of consensus reality. Um, just so you know, this was true when I was at the Department of Mental Health too. If you looked at the human rights complaints they got, the vast majority of them were somebody saying, hey, I know this is a button I can push that's going to make a thing happen. You know, it's the same reason sometimes people call 911 on themselves, right? They don't actually want to end up in a 911 situation, but they do know that if you call 911, someone's coming. And, and you guys serve that role. It's a, it's a nice one. It, thinking about engagement roles, one of the things might be just to kind of be able to talk to those folks about the limits of things. I think if they could hear that from someone uh, who they felt like had the power, that, that might be helpful. Maybe that's a, a collaborative space we can work through where we could do that together. Right, you guys can talk about what you can and can't do, and then we could be in the room to fill in what what pieces we can hold. Yep, and I would like to say too, like a couple of years ago, um, it's we got a complaint about someone, and you know, just having the town reach out to say that a human rights complaint has been filed against you gets people shaking in their knees, right? And so while this person was telling us their story, you know, it was debatable whether or not this program had a, a process or not, right? But they had a process afterwards, right? Because we called and said, you know, we need to see your process. So whether they had the process when that, you know, they should have had it, but if they didn't have that process when that person made the complaint, they have the process now. And so one of the things that happens is there is some kind of change that usually happens the individual on Mill Lane, they have taken down that free welcome sign, right? Like, you know, <laughs> so it's not, it's, you know, there's a, there's a limit, a, a, like a restriction of how far back you can go now, right? So you shouldn't have to take these kinds of things to get, you know, some things done, but sometimes it does, right? So any more questions, guys? None from I. Nope. I'm gonna go. Um, I don't. I think that was the basis of the agenda. If we're tabling the events, 
Um, I do want to be able to meet twice. Hmm. No. So we, you know, I will send out folks stuff for the Human Rights Commission Hero Awards if we need stuff, if we need shoppers, if we need um, folks to go pick stuff up. So I will send um, something out. And then for Juneteenth, I think we'll be having a Juneteenth meeting, you know, next week maybe. And so hopefully by our next meeting or even before, I can send you guys some info on the different stuff that we need. And I would also like to say one of the really nice things about being involved with these events and collaborating with the community about it is it is a way for us to network folks with the town and you know at the end of the day for me that's one of my stronger missions is to, to connect people to town who we don't typically hear from because what they don't realize is we need to hear that voice right and we don't hear it because they don't know that these things exist so when we have these kind of events it brings the people that we don't typically hear from and so you know, the May 7th one, you know, I actually, you know, because everything is so, you know, it's at the park and we've reached out to Amherst Recreation to have them be involved. And so when it's going to come to uh, some community events for Crest, we're going to try and really have that be an, an all inclusive town event where we get all the different town um, entities together just to really be able to, to let folks know like, hey, we're here, we're resources, we have resources. Um, and you know, so it's just going to be a lot of, it's going to be a good summer with lots of events. So I guess I'll have to stick around. Well, I know you guys are sticking around, right? But so, um, that's really, that's it really for the meeting, unless someone has something else. I don't think that there's anything else on the agenda. Um, we're going to shoot for the third Wednesday of the month for our next meeting and there won't be a Monday holiday. So we don't have to worry about things not getting scheduled looking at the calendar is that may 18th yeah, yeah i'm scared to look yeah. at my calendar because i know yeah, you're <laughs> yes uh, yes it is uh, 18th i just pulled one up perfect so yeah may 18th so i did want to check in does wednesday i mean we we don't have sid and we don't have erica here but do wednesdays yeah. work best for folks or does Thursday work better? Like I wanted to retouch on that. Yeah, so for me, Thursdays are way better because like I, I sort of have that basketball program thing. And yeah. so I have like four hours of practice every Wednesday and it's like hard for me to like defer to other folks. That's a, that's a lot of practice, Ben. I, I, I might I might <laughs> file a complaint. <laughs> you probably should. There is, there's definitely a... Uh, a human rights violation going on here, self inflicted but whatever. And then uh, Liz and Philip, how do how are Wednesdays, Thursdays? How do they look for you? For me, it doesn't matter which day. I mean, you know, I have track on Wednesdays. I have track on Thursdays, and I'll get here. Sometimes it'll be in my car, and sometimes I'll be finishing a meet and talking to you at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Liz. I love it, Philip. Yeah. Yeah, uh, Wednesdays or Thursdays are fine with me. The only thing that I have is for the month of May, the 19th will not work for me. I am graduating with my master's on that day. So, oh, yes, sir. We need to honor oh, you. Yeah. So we're partying on the 19th. I got it. I got it. It's, it's supposed to just get swept underneath the table. <laughs> yeah. you? Hey, yeah, I'll, be, I'll DJ your party. Yeah. I'll do that. I'll DJ it. Yep, okay. yeah. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Yeah, no, Philip, we gotta, we gotta, yeah, they'll have something will have to pop off for that. Oh, the other sure. thing is that um, the event on May 7th is the Saturday before Mother's Day. And so we, I think, oh. are going to be giving all the moms roses out on okay. Mother's Day. Um, so it's equally with Juneteenth and maybe you guys can kind of help me over here too. Um, so Juneteenth falls on Father's Day. And yeah. so I'm trying to find a way to honor the fathers, you know, and maybe it is that we just give each dad a rose. I'm not sure if that works in the, you know, how people, I don't know. So we could just do that to keep it simple if people feel like that's a good idea. I mean, I'll take a rose. Yeah, I like it. Yeah. Yes, 
<laughs> Men right. like flowers too. They just like to be acknowledged. So I think that would be appropriate. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. Right. So I mean, we'll just have to have a lot of a lot of flowers because it's hard to predict who will be at the event overall. Um, yeah. But that's good. That's good feedback because I reached out to Pete and he was like, I don't know. So that wasn't, you know, <laughs> I didn't get much there. So we can do, I think we're doing carnations. So we can do carnations or roses or um, whatever. So that sounds good. So um, yeah, that's basically it. I'm so sorry that things were a little bit rocky at the beginning of the meeting. Um, a little more, I'm, I'm kind of a whiz now on the phone with the Zoom and I won't have to do it again and I'll have the same issue. So. <laughs> Much appreciated uh, though. I, I've played hooky for like two months now. So like, I can't really talk. It's hard to play hooky yeah. when you're the host. I was, and for some reason <laughs> I was like, oh, the meeting's not till seven. And then I was like, wait a minute, the meeting's at 6.30. And I like turned the you know, wheel real hard and, and pulled over and was like, oh my God, gotta start this meeting. <laughs> So if you want to go ahead and call the meeting at this time, and then I'll, I'll do the minutes when I, I can record and listen to the meeting later. So as of 7.30, we are adjourned. Thank you. Have a Bye. good night, Thank everyone. You. Welcome. Thanks for letting me come. Take care, Welcome. everyone. Yep. Bye. 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 Bye.